Hey everyone, it's Corey. Welcome back to the Unlocking Doors podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Michelle Castle. Today, we are talking about budgeting for home ownership. And this is something that Michelle is very passionate about Mm -hmm. as she deals in finance Mm -hmm. all the time. So Mm -hmm. we'll jump right into it. The, Mm -hmm. The one thing we wanted to talk about, and this was kind of from one of our last episodes, was understanding your, we were talking about insurance in the mm-hmm. last episode, mm-hmm. and now we're going to jump into understanding your escrow account. Mm-hmm. One thing we're seeing with increases in uh, insurance premiums and property taxes is mm-hmm. adjustments and shortages to escrow mm-hmm. accounts and mm-hmm. how that could affect buyers. Yeah. What is something that you see quite often with that on your end? You know, it's confusion, confusion, lack yeah. of understanding. So in your escrow account, you've got to think, all right, so whenever you buy a house, we're paying that insurance policy at the time of closing. Right. So the insurance policy is not due again for 12 months. Right. However, insurance is a scheduled, it's a calendar event mm-hmm. and it's, we typically mortgage companies will pay that at the end of the year, even though it's not due until January, they'll pay it at the end of the year. So you have it for tax write-offs that year. Mm-hmm. So All we're doing in our escrow account is the same thing that you would do to make sure that you have the money in an account to pay the bills when the bills are due. Right. And we're just collecting that as part of the mortgage payment. So sometimes there's that confusion or frustration because your payment's gone up. Well, it's gone up because taxes and insurance have gone up, just Mm -hmm. like they would if you were paying them on your own. Right. Not paying attention to the insurance when you get a notification that your premium's going up and your premium is due in 30 days Mm -hmm. is is one of the mistakes that I see people make Mm -hmm. because then they're just shocked at the next year when we send a notification that says your payment's going up because your insurance went up. Well, why did my insurance go up? I don't know. But why didn't you question that at the yeah. time that it went up? Like we talked on the last episode, you know, paying attention, how much are you covered for and what's the premium and making sure that you know what you're paying for is really important. Right. And over time, insurance is going to go up. And over time, you need to increase coverage because the value of home goes up, your life changes, you've accumulated some things that you might need coverage for. So paying attention... And then your taxes, the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want tax values to go up. You bought something that you hope is going to appreciate over time. So you're going to get taxed on that appreciation. So, well, we all want our values to go up. We don't want our tax values. to I know, I know, but we can't have both. And that's one thing I see is, you know, when people go and buy a home, especially if there's a home that hasn't sold in a really long time, sometimes mm-hmm. the appraisal district undervalues that property, mm-hmm. um, not intentionally, but sometimes they just haven't adjusted it. And sometimes gets, it flies under the radar. It flies under the radar. And when that happens and then the appraisal district sees, oh, ownership changed hands, mm-hmm. we need to reassess this property. And you're budgeting off of what it was assessed at Mm -hmm. instead of what you paid for it. Mm -hmm. That's where I see some people get in trouble. But I think that's where people need to be paying attention to you. Like if I were, if that was a loan that I was doing and I saw on the tax assessed value that maybe the property was assessed at 275, but these people are buying it, this family's buying it for three and a quarter, then I'm going to do my, my escrows based on three and a quarter. Right. Now, another lender might go, hey, I've got a cheaper payment over here. Well, yeah, you dummy, because you're doing it off 275 as a tax value and not three and a quarter. And it's not fair to the buyer because you're going to be short in your taxes. Yeah. So pay now, pay later. Either way, you're going to pay, but you're going to pay more by waiting to pay later. So you're not going to get away. I mean, like, it's still going to be assessed for fair market value. Right. Another thing that I see with escrow accounts, and really it's whenever, I mean, because the escrow account is always adjusting, Mm -hmm. it's really whenever homeowners then have a shortage, Mm -hmm. and that's where they feel, because number one, you're paying to catch up that shortage, Mm -hmm. and then also you're paying the higher, you know, you're paying for the prediction of what it's going to be. The prediction of what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how to put that into mm-hmm. words. But yeah, you're paying for the prediction Projection, of what it's going to really, be but yeah. based on the following year too. Mm-hmm. And so that's where, you know, instead of, let's say if the shortage would have been, you know, a hundred bucks a month, mm-hmm. now it's going up 200 a month mm-hmm. so that number one, you're not 
you know, you're catching up, but also you're not mm-hmm. short again the mm-hmm. following year mm-hmm. and it doesn't turn into a snowball of getting behind. Right. You know, I think one thing that most listeners may not know, so I'm hoping they get to learn right here, yeah. is you can call your mortgage company. If that creates a hardship, if that $200 a month is just really more than you can take on as an, an additional payment, you can call the mortgage company and ask them if they will spread that shortage out over a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. Like, Guild Mortgage will spread that out over 60 months. Okay. So just keep that in mind if... if See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So, oh, yay. So I yeah. taught you something today, too. Yeah. So because, I mean, really, at the end of the day, a mortgage company doesn't want that home back. They want to find a way for you to be able to stay in the home. Yeah. And so we understand sometimes that big adjustment in payment, and sometimes the big adjustments are like six and seven and $800. Right. That's a lot. So you can ask to spread that out. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. With people who bought with a conventional loan and maybe they put less than 20% down, they're going to have mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. What are some of their options? Because, and and that can equate to several hundred dollars a month in your Mm -hmm. payment as well. Mm -hmm. What are their options in removing that or can Mm -hmm. you remove it Mm -hmm. before, you know, do you have to put 20% down to remove it? What does that look like? There's a, there's a lot of options that most people are not aware of whenever it comes to mortgage insurance, but I mean, I want to emphasize you don't have to have 20% down for a conventional loan. Okay. And a lot of people, I'm seeing a lot of people right now with a lot of equity in their home, they're selling their home and then they're thinking automatically, I've got to put all of the equity from the sale of my home into my home. Yeah. And sometimes that's a great idea. Other times it's not such a great idea. So first thing I want to address is 20%, just because this is your second home and you have the equity doesn't mean you need to like put that money towards the new house. Mm -hmm. It really is a good time for you to assess your finances and determine, do I have an emergency fund? Well, let's put some money away into an emergency fund and keep some of that money back. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of building wealth over time is to give you that financial freedom, right? And it's giving you flexibility. It's not just throwing it right back into real estate. It's allowing you to leverage the equity to make some smart financial decisions. And real estate is a good investment. Then I think it's really important that you assess who am I paying right now and what does it cost me for that? So if you're paying out money for uh, credit cards, that's the one thing I see right now. The natural average on interest rates on credit cards is 22%. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So let's get those wiped out. So it might mean that, yes, you're going to have monthly mortgage insurance because you're spending some money to put some money in savings. You're paying off some debt so that home is more affordable and it's just a smarter way of using your money. So you're going to have mortgage insurance. Yeah. It's not on there forever. Right. So your mortgage insurance is on there until you have 22% equity. Okay. So if you put 20% down, you don't have mortgage insurance, but you need to be at 22% and you're going to pay on it for at least two years. Mm -hmm. So you just take the cost of what am I paying on interest somewhere else? And is it more than what I would pay on mortgage insurance to have that mortgage insurance for two years? Right. And if it is, then pay off the debt pay your mortgage insurance monthly. With houses appreciating like they are, if your house appreciates faster than what the the amortization schedule is for you to get to 22%, mm-hmm. you can request removal of your mortgage insurance. Yeah. And it's super simple. And so, you know, I've been making a lot of those phone calls just with people who have been in the homes for for two or more years. Yeah. Because you can get rid of it. Now, you can also do mortgage insurance up front versus monthly, right. or you can do partially up front and partially monthly. You just want to make sure your mortgage insurance co- company is doing a refundable mortgage insurance policy if you're going to do it up front. That way you can get a refund when you hit 22%. Gotcha. Instead of just using that money for a mortgage insurance premium you don't totally use right. if you cancel it. So there's a lot of options that people aren't necessarily thinking or that even exist whenever it comes to MI. But MI is not MI is not a bad idea. It's not money wasted mm-hmm. as long as you're making smart decisions on how you're using the money otherwise. And that's one your of the, money. Yeah, that's one of the things I really like about y'all's mortgage coach software that y'all mm-hmm. use is you can take a look at, okay, what does it look like if we don't put 20% down, mm-hmm. we pay off this credit card, mm-hmm. pay off this car, mm-hmm. and yes, we have mortgage insurance, but mm-hmm. we're not paying 22% interest. Yeah. 
another thing is, and we talked about this before we started recording a little bit, is do you have a savings account or like an mm-hmm. emergency fund mm-hmm. if if something does come up and like your car breaks down and you've got to mm-hmm. have a you know twelve hundred dollar repair? Can you front that money, mm-hmm. or are you going to have to go put that on your credit card right. at twenty two percent because all of your cash mm-hmm. is tied up in your in the equity of your home? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so that's there's a lot of stuff to think about mm-hmm. and. Being able to break down the numbers with the mortgage coach software that y'all have is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I've had several clients that have gone through that with you. And I've even looked at some stuff myself, Mm -hmm. some scenarios that y'all have given me. And so I I just am a huge proponent of budgeting, saving. I'm not, you know, all the way over on the Dave Ramsey side of like... No know, debt. Yeah, no debt. Yeah. Uh, get rid of every little bit of debt mm-hmm. because there is smart debt in my you're, opinion. You're a Dave Ramsey hybrid. I'm a hybrid, yeah. So anyways, I'm... Yeah. I, but I am a proponent of being smart with your money, having a plan, saving, investing. Well, and as hard as the conversation can be sometimes, I think, you know, if, you're, if you've got a partner in life... You sit down together and really look at your finances. Yeah. You may not see eye to eye, and you do have to understand you come from different backgrounds. Your family upbringing was totally different, and so your ideas about money is going to be totally different. But I think it's at one time you really need to work on a com- – like find something that you can look forward to and work together as a common household financial goal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was a mouthful. I had that to say was. that slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as far as Mm -hmm. budgeting for home ownership, we hope this was very helpful. And if you have any questions or need tips or just any kind of guidance in all of this, Mm -hmm. myself and especially Michelle, I know this is what she's very passionate about. I like the money part. would love to help out Mm -hmm. in your situation. So be sure and subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And we will Mm -hmm. catch you on the next episode of Unlocking Doors.